Uh, here we are again, zooming the architectural board review meeting um, for uh, September 1st, uh, 2020. Um, so, Michael, do a roll call, please. Okay. Uh, Member Dittmer. Here. Member Waymeyer. Here. Member Kerouac. Here. Member Dahlman. Here. Uh, Chair Hunter. Here. And uh, members uh, Callahan and uh, Deegan are absent. Okay. Uh, consideration of the August 4th uh, ABR meetings minutes. Uh, anybody have any comments or corrections or whatnot? I wasn't here, so I have no comments. Oh, go ahead. Uh, anybody else? No. No. Can somebody do a, a motion? I move the minutes be approved. Okay, and a second? I second. All right. So this got to be a roll call, right, Mike? Uh, yes, that's right. Uh, Member Kerouac. Aye. Member Dahlman. Aye. Member Waymeyer. Aye. Member Dittmer. Aye. And Chair Hunter. Chair Hunter, your vote? Aye. Okay, the motion passes. Okay, next item is the non agenda items. Do we have any non agenda items on the, either in the in the wings somewhere, Mike? Um, you know, probably not, but I will just um, go ahead and say that uh, if anyone uh, needs to speak on a non-agenda item, please hit the button that says uh, raise your hand on the lower part of the screen to indicate you want to oh, speak on okay. a non-agenda so item. anybody that would like to speak on a non-agenda item, uh, raise your hand by what, what, hitting the button on yeah, there's a button that says raise hand on the on the lower okay. right. Okay. But it's I don't raise hand button. I don't see anybody hitting that and I believe everybody's here for agenda items, so uh, I think we can go on. Okay, so next item on the agenda then is consideration of an application for a sign permit for the talent blood donation at two twenty three South Waukegan Road. In carriageway. That's right. Um, let me, uh, yep, let me, uh, let me, uh, okay. I just, uh, I just gave our applicant, uh, permission to talk there. Okay. Okay. Yes, uh, yes, yes. For applying for a sign permit for Vitalin blood donation. Yes. Yes, go ahead and, uh, Tell us what you'd like to uh, present about your sign. Okay, um, we submitted the permit for the wall sign, and um, it is a it is a one feet eight inches um, high, including the logo because the logo is a little higher than the in the middle. So it's a channel letter, illuminated channel letter sign, um, LED illuminated, and it has uh, white faces. Um, uh, only the logo is digital print with a little bit of bougainvillea, I mean, I mean uh, fuchsia and orange. And um, it will be attached in the wall. Okay, so this is a sign that conforms with sign code. Yes. Okay, it appears as though it does. So, anybody have any comments or, or discussion about this particular sign? This is. I did have a question that it indicates to them the drawing that there's a, uh, a photo cell 
Yeah. And I wonder, is that is that just a box? Will it be painted to match the brick or or whatever? It's on, okay. on, on the, the time clock. It's on what? It's on the time clock. <clears throat> on the sign plans? There's no indication of what it looks like. I, I assume yeah, it's some kind of a it, box. But it, yeah, but it will be vegan, right? You, people will not be able to see it. Yeah, yeah it will be hidden. Um, uh, it will it will not be it will be. Uh -huh. uh, the photo stand is by the national account, and they drove. Uh, actually, I missed also that part, and then it's gonna be go under the time clock control, and we'll we'll not need to install any photo cell, and it is very safe. Oh, it's going to be on a time clock instead of a photo cell. Is that what you said? So you're not going to have the photo cell? Yes, sir. Is it? Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, now I understand. Okay. Yep. Good. Does that answer your question, Neil? I think so. I assume it's not mounted outside of the building. It's mounted somehow inside. Yeah, the yeah, section is inside. Okay. Anybody else have a question? Comment? Um, I think it looks good. I don't have any issues or questions. Okay. I agree. I agree also. All right. Well, then somebody make a motion. Okay. Thank you so much. Have a nice evening, everybody. Hold, hold on one second. <laughs> We're not done yet. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, are we recommending or are we approving? A approving. Okay. Um, I move to approve uh, the sign as submitted by by talent um that's it no secondary items second the motion was that Shri seconded yes okay okay mr mike roll call oh okay uh member dahlman aye member waymeyer aye member dipmer Member Dittmer, your vote? Aye. Uh, Member Kerouac? Aye. And Chair Hunter? Aye. Okay, motion passes. The sign is approved. Thanks. Thank you. Moving we'll right along, a public hearing to review a site plan for building alterations for JC. Licked at 413 West Washington Avenue. Okay. Good I, evening. Uh, good evening. Hey, good evening. I'm, I'm Chris Rosati. I'm the architect for the JC Lick store at 413 West Washington. Um, Let's see. Oh, sorry, I, that's that's my fault. I've just promoted him to panelist. He should show up on our screen, I think. Hi, can you hear me? Look like my uh, I, I yeah. lost the connection. Okay. I will start over. So I'm okay. Chris Rosati. I'm the architect for the JC Lick store at 413 West Washington. The tenant space is located in the southeast corner of the building, and uh, we're we're doing a uh, interior finish out. And part of that is going to uh, include replacement of an existing entry on the south face of the building. Um, that's currently a hollow metal door. We're going to replace that with an aluminum and glass door to match the existing storefront. And on the east elevation, we're uh, bricking in an existing door that uh, has been abandoned. Um, so we're going to brick that up and remove the door with brick to match existing. And then the adjacent overhead door um, to the north of that, we're going to uh, remove and replace that with um, storefront in the dark brown color to match existing. And that will become the main entrance um, to the store. Okay, and this is where the auto uh, body place used to be? It's actually currently a paint store. Um, 
It's just J.C. Licht uh, purchased, uh, or uh, I'm not sure oh. how, you know, if they purchased that uh, okay. place or if they merged it. Yeah, it's been Thibony there, so so no, the auto body has been the other space in the building, in the front of the building. That's what I thought, yeah. yeah. Okay. Anybody have any questions about this? It's fairly straightforward. Um, I just wanted to double check. Is there just the elevation um, that we received here, or are there additional documents? Um, I believe that was all you received. That's all that pertains to the exteriors, those um, those three elements I discussed. Okay. And then with the main entrance then um, being adjusted and shifting over to where the overhead door was, um, are there any issues with the uh, access as far as um, how, you know, with the grading and that sort of thing to make sure that that works as an entrance? Uh, no, because it, it was an overhead door, so the pavement is um, flush with the threshold of that previous door, so there is no curb or anything like that. And then there's no concern with the traffic or, you know, cars being in the area where the people are going to be now? No, it's similar to the south side of the building where parking is along the building. So the parking ran uh, basically on both sides of the building, and so it really uh, is essentially the same as it was on the south, just moving it to the east. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Um, will you be having uh, any submittals for any sign changes, or is the signage remaining the same? There will be a signage change, but that is going to come before you in a separate uh, Okay, great. Um, and then are you having any changes to exterior lighting since you're changing the, um, the entrance? Um, no, the existing lighting that is on the building is going to remain, um, you know, there already was some lighting on that side for, uh, you know, the overhead door, so that's going to share. Sure. Okay, great. Will the, uh, the paint company take over the entire building? Uh, not at this time. It was just the, uh, the existing space that was there um, is all that they're taking. Okay, so the rest is just being remodeled for future tenants or expansion. I'm sorry, say that again? I'd say the rest is just being remodeled for a future tenant or expansion. No, we're, we're not doing anything to the rest of the building. So it's, it's the existing corner tenant is all we're working in uh, that space. The rest of it's all existing to remain. Oh, okay. All right, anybody else have any questions? I, I see that you the, your questions were answered on your submittal, so I apologize for making you. I should have read one more sentence down. So no worries. I apologize. No problem. Yeah. <laughs> read the complete text. Okay. Any, any more comments, questions? Are we ready for a, uh, what's the word? A motion. Um, <laughs> recommend that the village board approve the site plan as presented. Okay. I, and I, I will second. All right. Mike. Okay. Um, Member Dittmer. Aye. Uh, Member Dahlman. Aye. Member Kerouac. Aye. Member Waymeyer. Aye. And Chair Hunter. All right. Okay. All, all in favor, the recommendation passes. Thank you very much. Sure, you're welcome. So. Okay, ready to go on? Yes, we are. Yep, if you'd okay. like, yep, go ahead. Ready, Mike? Yeah, go ahead, Bob. Okay, so this one is a public hearing to review site plan for lighting at the target development. Uh, 945 to, 9, to 975 Rockland Road. Anybody to speak to this? I believe we have two, well, let's see, maybe I have to, I think they've both yeah, muted sorry. themselves. Um, yep. 
This is Steve Breidenbach. I went to Villa Lighting, uh, worked on the lighting design on this. I believe questions were with the color of the fixture and the color temperature of the lighting, correct? Bob, should we swear the, we should probably swear the um, presenters in. I think we may have forgotten oh, that in the yeah, last one, but we should do that public for hearing. public hearing. So, uh, let me see, I gotta remember this. Uh, this is for the presenter. Um, you have to repeat yeah. after me. Do you, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, and the testimony you're about to give? If you do, say I do. I do. Okay, good, thank you. Um, all right, so let's get going on this then. We've got some thoughts. Oh, will you finish with your presentation on this? Sorry, I switched screens. Um, I don't, I mean, we submitted uh, all the documents with what's existing and what's planned. I'm, I'm not sure what questions there were here for me to answer. I know I was requested to be here to answer any questions with the design. Okay. Um. So, so just to I, I, just to give the board a quick summary, I, I believe the proposal is to replace all the uh, pole-mounted light fixtures in the whole target development with LEDs and their existing metal halide and. Um, Steve, if I understand correctly, the existing metal halides are 4,000 Kelvin color temperature and the new LEDs are proposed to be also the same 4,000 Kelvin color temperature. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. And I think the proposal is that the new fixtures, the housing will be brushed aluminum and you're proposing to paint these poles to, to brushed aluminum to match. Is that right? It, that's probably the best description of the color. It's a, it's a light gray. That, that, that's the closest I could probably describe it. Is the, the existing poles are kind of a warm brown gray, kind of a light, almost brownish gray. Is there a reason to change the, uh, the color of the poles in the head? Head color, it would be difficult to match the poles with what the manufacturer uh, has available. Uh, as far as the color of the poles and the, that, that's what Target has chosen as their as their standard moving forward for their lots is this is this light gray, and that's what they've used pretty much every every place they've worked on nationwide except for a handful of locations. Okay. I would have said that's what they were now, but. Uh... I thought the text said something about staff reviewed the proposed lighting and suggested a warmer 3000 temperature, okay, temperature light. I, I talked to Brian Renner, um, you know, one of the former village board members who's uh, an architect who does lighting design and has given us some opinions on a lot of uh, um, lighting proposals, and, and he recommended mm -hmm. going to uh, 4,000 K, which is a warmer light is what he recommended. We, we did that with um, the lighting that his firm designed to go on the fire station, the front and the new lights on the front and back of the fire station were, uh, were done in the 3,000 K warm lights, but those are probably among the few lights around town that I know of that are that warm. Probably 4,000K is more typical. Well, isn't 4,000K a wider, brighter light? It is. I've done two uh, um, relating projects recently. And generally, uh, residential applications are 2,700 or 3,000. And commercial applications would be around 4,000. And and uh, you're right, Shri, it, it is brighter. 5,000 is... is uh, generally considered daylight mm -hmm. and uh for the commercial applications uh, uh that i've done i prefer four thousand okay but brian was recommending three thousand that that's right yeah 
I believe that's what he said. You deal with a a loss of efficiency going down to 3,000 from 4,000, your, your lumens per watt drop. So the the amount of light you're getting out of that fixture uh, isn't isn't as high as it would be in a 4,000K or a, or a 5,000K. So what's hitting the, hitting the ground is less in terms of the old foot candles number. Correct, yeah, based on based on the wattage put in, what you get to the ground is, is yeah. less. And what, I'm so sorry, what is the existing Kelvin? Existing is metal halide, so it should be 4,000. They aren't as exact as LED, so right. it, can, it can waver. Yeah. Sure. But that's more in the 4,000 range? Yeah. Right. So do we know why Brian recommended the 3,000K then? I mean, if it's, if it, this is what's recommended and that's what's there, why does he believe that uh, the 3,000K would be better or he recommends it? Well, he said it was better for people and animals, more natural for people and animals at, at night as far as, I think, setting the biological clock or affecting circadian rhythms, that type of thing. A warmer light is better, is what he said. I, I think that's true. I actually know that's true. But uh, on the other side of the coin, if you drop it down and it becomes less efficiency, uh, less efficient, then it seems like the uh, uh, the reason for doing it starts to dwindle a little bit. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah, I'd be in favor of letting Target do what they want to do. Uh, and as I understand it, uh, in the right of it said uh, 4,000 or 5,000. As I gather, uh, you're looking at 4,000? Yes, the, the fixture specified are 4,000K. Uh-huh. Okay, what's everybody's thoughts? I, I would uh, recommend the 4,000 also over the three. I agree. Agree. I'll go with that. How about the, uh, the color? I kind of like that better. Yeah, I think as long as the pole and the fixture are consistent, I think that um, seemed like that'd be a aesthetically pleasing combination. Agree. Agreed. Okay, everybody seems to agree. Uh, somebody want to make a motion? Um, I will. I move to recommend the um, submittal for the site plan for lighting at the target development um, with the revision of the light fixtures having a, a measure of 4,000 Kelvin. I second that. Any further discussion? If not, then uh, I have a motion. Or, or the roll call, you mean? Um, me Member Dittmer? Um, aye. Member Dahlman? Aye. Member Waymeyer? Aye. Member Kerouac? Aye. And Chair Hunter? Chair Hunter, your vote? Aye. Okay. All ayes. The recommendation passes. Okay. Rick, thank you. Yep, thanks guys. Thank you. Thanks everybody, have a good night. What? Thank you, have a good night. Sure, thank you. So that's, that's all our applicants, but I've got uh, two things to uh, talk to you guys about. Item, item number seven is a discussion of uh, building code amendments. We wanted to discuss um, chapter one of the building code tonight and then uh, bring it back on um, the October meeting for a vote. Um, we're uh, doing the amendments for a couple reasons. Um, one, it's, it's really the first step of uh, what is our, our planned effort to, uh, to update to the uh, 2018 codes when we get uh, out of chapter one and onto the, uh, the next chapters of, of Title IX. 
So this is the first step um, in that regard. Um, it also makes some organizational changes that I think will be very helpful to us, and I'll get into those in a minute. But then it also um, is necessary to sync our, uh, our chapter one with some uh, changes the Historic Preservation Commission is working on with regard to um, the definition of demo and a few things that affect historic preservation. So it's, it's necessary for that coordination. Um, as far as the organizational changes, um, you know, one of the big things is right now there's a um, kind of a big long list of requirements for demolitions in Chapter 1. And um, it, it, it's kind of a uh, grab bag mixture of some things the architect has to put on their plans, some things the contractor has to do during construction, and, and some things, you know, we'd want the contractor to submit before we issue the permit. So, you know, we thought it'd be a little more logical to sort that out into three different lists, you know, categorizing kind of the way I mentioned there um, into, you know, one, one list of uh, things the architect should show on their plans and another list for, for other items we need before we issue the permit. And, and thirdly, um, things the, uh, contractor should uh, follow during construction. Um, so we did that, uh, that separation and uh, moved some things around. And uh, on the red line version, that kind of created a lot of the red lines because when we move requirements around, it ends up showing as deleted out of one place and uh, it moved into another place. Um, and, and Glenn Cole, our uh, assistant to the village administrator, is on here with us. Um, to a large extent, he's on here for the next item that we're going to talk about, but he may also have some, uh, some input regarding the uh, Historic Preservation Commission's changes and how that uh, affects Chapter 1. Glenn, do you have anything you want to say now with that regard to that? I, I take that as a no. He has himself muted at the moment, so... I'll, uh, I'll I'll go to the uh, to the members. Do you have questions for me on on this, Mike? Before you move on, mm -hmm. um, I got a question. I guess it's for Glenn. The 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 uh, items that were added by HPC. Uh, I know when I was on it, we were we were working with that, and it looks like they presented that to the village board. Has that been uh, approved by the village board? Hey, and good evening, everyone. Apologies, my uh, the storms are a little heavier down here, closer to the city, so my internet just cut out. I caught the, the tail end of your question, uh, Chairman Hunter. Um, so let me answer that if I could, and then uh, okay. backtrack a little bit. Did you get enough of it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so maybe, um, if I could, maybe best to introduce both of these items quickly. Uh, and then happy to take questions. So um, as you saw um, on Friday and then um, earlier this morning, we shared um, two items uh, that, that have been underway with other village committees um, for the Architectural Board of Review's consideration. Um, the first, we'll go in reverse order. The first, what you saw this morning is a set of updated um, historic preservation regulations. Um, that we have some uh, a pretty good amount of time to for you guys to review and to share feedback on. Um, this has been uh, a process that uh, this commission has worked through. Bob was there when it started, um, and so they've been kind of really working through a lot of tough problems. They presented um, so they presented a plan on where they were going close to a year ago. They presented really the specifics of what they were proposing at a committee of the whole last month and then uh, we finaled out the last few details to get this full draft of the ordinance out there um, this month so this body is actually of course this has all been done in, in public meetings uh, as members of the apr you're actually some of the first people to get um, our letter and get our draft revisions and we're sending that out to all kinds of different groups over the course of the week um, our realtors our current landmark property owners architects, others, um, trying to make sure 
that anyone who um, wants to contribute to this can um, by the HPC's meeting in October. Okay. Does anybody have any present comments to pass on to Glenn? Is that enough? Um, Glenn, do you have, and I know we talked about this, do you have, um, have you changed the formula for defining demolition, like complete demolition? <coughs> Yes, and uh, for for context, one of the fine details we were working through at the committee level, the last details, was how do you define a demolition, not in every context, but just for the purposes of figuring out what which demolished structures would be subject um, to significant demolition review, which is have a structure that's over 50 years old in the village um, being more than halfway torn down. Um, today, the formula is based on floor area ratio. And so if you're tearing down a number of internal walls, um, for example, for a renovation, and you, you start to get the exterior walls, well, you can have a very large floor area, but not really be changing the exterior of the house too much. Um, what we're proposing is a different formula. It actually draws in some sense from uh, similar formulas in Highland Park and then more distantly um, to the west, Boulder, Colorado. Uh, but it's really just based on the perimeter of the building. It's based on the exterior walls that are being disturbed or having finished materials removed from both sides uh, versus the exterior walls that are remaining. And so we think uh, on balance, it will tend to let more projects that are renovations through without needing to take an extra 30 days, um, but still keep capturing and letting us review those projects that actually are um, demolitions or major changes um, to our streetscapes. And did you include demolition of the roof as part of that? We did not use the, um, the, the roof formula. We were playing with that and it did, um, we were kind of, in looking at it, it seemed like that added, there were other examples that only drew on the walls that seemed to be stable and we were worried that the including the roof might lead to too it would complicate the the calculation and maybe would make it easier to manipulate um open to ideas there if there are alternatives yeah my only concern because i do a lot of one to two story you know projects and you know by i could leave the whole first floor if it's a one story ranch I could leave that whole first floor alone, tear that roof off, and put a second story on there and totally change everything about the house. And I guess it depends on what your uh, desired outcome in, is in reviewing these projects. Is it maintaining character of the residence, or is it um, just updating the project per code? What what when you kick these into the significant demolition, what are you trying to achieve with that review? Yeah, so uh, where exactly that line is, I think is an interesting question and one we've, we've gone about, around about a bit. Um, I think it is, the concern is less, if you would, changes in character and more um, trying to catch, at least so far, it's been trying to catch when a structure is proposed to really be demolished or to be entirely unrecognizable. Um, does adding a second story make it entirely unrecognizable? Well, that's that's a pretty good question. Um, it's uh, it, it, it is a balancing act, and I'm sure uh, yeah. that idea is something we can look at a little bit close, more closely. I think you probably should. I mean, there's a number of the Harlan ranches in town uh, that uh, have put either full two stories on, or in the case of one I did, um, it sort of turned it into a Cape Cod, but the base base building still is very, uh, looks just like the Harlan ranch did. It's just got a very you know, steeper pitch. Uh, the Eve line stays the same as it was. Uh, so there's there's lots of variations on a theme that you can go there, but that was that that those things are now over 50 years old, so they will fall into that uh, category. They may want to think about that. I think it's a good question, Matt. 
Yeah, because I, and I've done these projects in Evanston where I've taken a, a ranch, kind of a, and I've taken the roof off, I've stained the brick a dark color, I put on a, um, some kind of cedar siding, a second floor addition with a pitched roof, you know, flat pitch, you know, pretty much a flat roof. And it went from a very humble little ranch to a very large contemporary home without any demolition of the first floor at all. We just stained the brick and changed the windows out. Um, so, which I love, I'm just trying to make sure that we're controlling what we want to control and allowing people to do what they want to do, you know, is a balancing act. And I know that's what you're trying to achieve, but I know I've done, I could have followed all your rules and you wouldn't have recognized that home, you know, a year later or anything about it. And I wouldn't have demoed one thing on that first floor. So it's just one to give you a heads up that there's ways to do things without demoing and by adding that it could totally change the nature of the house. Absolutely. I will mention too, and not to detract from your point, Matt, but also worth another theme that we have here is, is really that, you know, I, I think the next step after this, these ordinance changes is that this commission, I, I think has desires to be more proactive in making sure that the things we actually want to protect in Lake Bluff, such as the Harlan homes, um, do have their opportunity to be landmarked or, or to be in a historic district or to have a higher level of protection um, than just any old structure. Sure. So I think important to note that that's part of the strategy yeah. too that we're looking at. Right. Anybody else have any questions on this, this uh, issue right now? You know, let me add one other thing. Uh, having been on that commission for 19 years, uh, we looked at a lot of ranches that were going through uh, some sorts of remodeling. Uh, and uh, one has to look at the building as, as they're not all historic. They may be 50 years old, uh, but I don't think there's a Harlan uh, house in, in the village of Lake Bluff. Uh, we've talked about it a number of times. It has been designated as historic. Uh, so uh, just because it's 50 years old, we, they would come before the uh, HPC uh, and uh, very often the HPC would say okay that we don't need to go through the whole process we understand what you're doing and, and why you're trying to do it uh, and you know we'll pass on it and you walk out the door that night uh, that doesn't happen all the time but on some of these it does and not everything is a Harlan house so there's a lot of uh, just uh, 50s ranches around So it's almost a case by case uh, issue. I don't know that you can totally legislate how you're going to deal with that. What's next then, Glenn? Yeah, the uh, only other one I, we're sharing with you tonight, and then we'll let you get on with your evening, is um, for uh, again a big a big big conversation that is yielding one particular fruit, if you would. Um, our Plan Commission Zoning Board of Appeals has spent um, a lot of time in different contexts in the last few years um, really dealing with the issue of alternative housing or, uh, or housing choice, if you would. Um, we've looked at uh, a lot of different projects, a lot of different ways to try and um, make progress towards a goal of the villages since at least 1997, which is just alternatives to a traditional single family house um, that serve you know, our students, that can serve our uh, divorcees, um, our, our older residents as they need less room, as they become empty nesters. Um, it's a problem the village has been concerned with for a long, a long time, but uh, to give you the, the real punchline, in the period of time since that comprehensive plan was developed, um, we're at minus two on our count of units. We lost two units with the redevelopment of block four and we haven't made any sense. And so um, as we look towards the next comprehensive plan um, for, the, for uh, the village, as we look towards reviewing some of these projects, um, I think you have a group in the plan commission that's really trying to figure out how to make some progress. 
Uh, and one of the ways they're looking at that has a, a bit of time sensitivity to it, if you would, just in that there are people interested in building them now, um, is the idea of accessory dwelling units. So you, coach houses or granny flats or basement apartments, um, I'm sure you're, there are many different forms and many different names. Um, but for a, a couple months now, and I think a couple months to come, the plan commission has really been diving into this specifically um, with the goal of perhaps uh, recommending some regulations that would allow them um, to the village board. Um, their framework has really been to let the, um, the village's current bulk regulations in residential areas work. Um, let bulk be bulk is, is really the short of it. Um, ensuring that you know if you're building one of these, um, you're gonna still have to meet the requirements for impervious surface. You'll still have to meet the requirements for floor area. This will still, in most circumstances, count towards floor area uh, and so on. Uh, there's really only one exception to that principle, which is in the village's regular residential districts um, a very narrow height exception, just because the regular height limit is 17 feet. And of course, you can't really fit a garage and a, a residence above it or a two-story building, anything like that, inside of 17 feet without, you guys are the experts, I would think some pretty bad architecture, <laughs> or at least some very contemporary architecture. So um, again, there's an outline um, that we shared with you in the packet and via email. Um, the plan commission will next consider this um, at their meeting here in a couple weeks in August and I suspect again in September. Um, we're happy, or excuse me, it's September now and again in October. <laughs> Time's flying. Um, and again, happy to relay any comments any members of the ABR have tonight or um, would like to share um, the next few weeks. Is this applied to R1 and R2? Uh, as drafted right now, this would apply to all residential districts in the village. Um, there are a couple of areas where it just wouldn't be possible due to deed restrictions. Um, so I don't think the sanctuary deed restrictions would allow it. Probably not in Tangley Oaks either, although I'm, I'm still working on researching that issue. Uh, but it would apply in the terraces the same as the east side, the same as on Green Bay Road and up in the estates. So. I'm just thinking, I've been thinking about my, anybody else have any comments before I start? Not yet. Not yet? From me. Okay. Anyway, here's my, my thought process and then I'm applying it to my own piece of property, which is uh, 87 feet wide and 120 feet deep. So another 20 feet that's an easement in the front. Um, my uh, FAR is right on the nose, uh, almost. Um, I have a, uh, a garage that's separate, faces the street, so I get no bonus from that. And I have a little accessory building in the back that used to be a carriage shed. Uh, that's probably 150 square feet. Um, so as, as far as FAR, I'm on a lot. Now, I've got a lot of empty, empty grass in my backyard and, in fact, my front yard. Uh, but I cannot see how I would be able to put a small accessory building uh, on my property and maintain any kind of uh, code, uh, either lot coverage or FAR. Does that make sense what I just said? It, it does, and I would say that's, um, you know, maybe not by design, maybe not ideal, but, um, you know, I think the balancing act, at least in our first conversations, is it, on the one hand, yes, it'll be difficult to build these within the framework of the village's bulk regulations. But on the other hand, are people, um, you know, historically bulk has been a very controversial subject in this village. <laughs> um, and so the idea of relaxing those rules may be um, a bit too too much a bit too early I just I think that I think it's a great idea I'm not against the idea uh, I just don't see where it's going to be physically possible to accommodate these um, other than on very very large pieces of property 
I would say most likely you would have to, um, you know, you wouldn't see it as a infill type of project with existing structures. I mean, it would really be in conjunction with probably new construction or, a, you know, a major renovation, a major addition, or major change in how you're using your property. Okay. And there's no parking allowed, as I get to, as I read this, right? Uh, it's not necessarily no parking allowed, but it's no parking required. You wouldn't be forced to build an additional parking spot to okay. accommodate okay. someone. Architecturally, I, I would volunteer that, um, at least since I've been with the village for a few years, you know, there's sort of been this longing, if you would, right? This idea that, you know, we have these small, funky houses with variety and these small, funky lots, and they're they're kind of going away. No one's building new ones. And so uh, a little bit of the personal excitement I would have architecturally is, you know, does this create an, an incentive to have smaller principal houses to be able to have the room for an accessory structure to give you just some more variety, some more rhythm um, in our streetscapes, maybe. See how that goes. Well, I think it's a good idea if we can make it work. Yeah, I'd be excited for it too. I think it's. Great. Anybody else have any, any comments or thoughts on this? Not right now. You know, we all drive around Lake Forest and see the carriage houses and the whatnot at the end of the driveways, you know, south of two and a half million uh, in front of the big house um, that are, sits on, you know, five or six or eight, 40 acres. We don't have that here. Right. Okay, and did anyone have any other comments on, uh, on chapter one at all? Of the building? Code? What was that, Mike? I, I was just asking if anyone had any comments on uh, chapter one of the building code at all. You don't have to have comments on it, just lost. asking. No, I, I, I think, uh, what the administration does to make things easier for submittals is, is good. Um, Great. It makes, it makes an owner and an architect's life a little bit, uh, a little bit easier and uh, actually a little bit cheaper for the owner, I would think. Mm -hmm. Great. Great. Yeah. I like the clarity, which is good. Thank you. And you said that we're going to be approving these next time. This is so we're getting a chance to look at them. And we can review them, and then uh, we'd be going through the approval next time. That, that's right. Yep, that's right. So, is there going to be another uh, uh, another section that deals with with code itself? Y yeah, um, I, I've. I think this winter we'll work on the uh, other chapters of the code that will change to, uh, you know, go from the 2015 uh, ICC codes to the 2018 edition of the ICC codes. So um, we'll probably see those in, uh, in January, I would think. Okay. Is that it, Mike? That's it. Gwen, got anything else? That's uh, that's the elevator pitch for both. So again, we appreciate your guys' consideration. If you have any comments, um, you're welcome to uh, drop me a note. I'm happy to talk on the phone, anything like that. But any advice, um, any thoughts are appreciated as we keep moving these forward. Right. It's pretty hard to do over over the computer. I'm sorry, it's yeah. not it's not my ball game here. No, this is this is heavy stuff too. I mean, it's hard to get through in a meeting either way. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, well, Mike, nothing. We're done. Yep, I'm 
we're ready if someone okay, would like to make a motion uh, to adjourn. Make a, yeah, somebody motion to adjourn. I move to adjourn. Okay, a second? Second. All right. I think all in favor works on this one, right? That's right. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Aye. Right, good night, everybody. Thank you. Good seeing everybody. Take care. How do you do, Mike? Yep.